Hi, this is Jim Starkweather with the Kitmaker Network, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we've got uh, Ernie G with us from G Factor Models, and we're taking a look at the new MiG 29 Fulcrum from Great Wall, Great Wall Hobbies, or GWH as they're also known as. Welcome, Ernie. Hi, Jim. Good to see you again. Thanks for thanks for stopping by and doing this for us. So I see we've got the uh, new Great Wall Hobbies uh, MiG 29 Fulcrum, the 912, which is essentially an A model, and. Uh, Looks well, like another great release from Great Wall Hobbies. Um, last time we re reviewed the Devastator, which was um, a stunning model, and uh, hoping that this model is going to be uh, just as well. Um, it's been a long time since we've had a new MiG-29 and 148 scale. The only kits that were ever available were the old monogram kit from 1988 and the Academy kit. Uh, can't remember what year that came out, but uh, all those models are, you know, have shown their age. And uh, it's nice to see a you know a newly told version of the you know so, an old R Russian great. So you can say this letter. is definitely a 21st century release. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> it would be a 21st 20. Yes, exactly. Sorry for being a little cliche there. So but. you well you know I mean they didn't have all that CAD technology back then. Exactly. You know everything had to be done by by hand or you know. Well, he's been, been looking at this for a while. We actually took it out of the box, and I can I can say that he is. Very excited and impressed with the kit, so we'll give that as kind of a little bit of lead lead there to the to the uh, review. But but let's go ahead and uh, take a closer look at some of the items and uh, see what you think. Well, here's the most impressive part about the whole kit. It, here's the upper fuselage, and you can see it's a one piece fuselage, absolutely beautiful tooling and molding. Uh, unlike the old the previous kits, you know they were all split the nose to to create that UV version. This is all a single piece molding so you don't have to worry about filling those dreaded seams. Um, you can also notice too it's actually got separate flaps and leading edge flaps too that are separate. Uh, the afterburner shrouds are, um, the plates are actually molded on too and you can see the parabrick, uh, the actual um, housing is separate so that can be opened as well. Uh, the rivet detail is super fine. Um, it's just an amazing piece of molding. You know, there's, there's no uh, need for additional rivets or anything like that. And let me interject too that um, later in the in this uh, video review, we'll be doing a close-up view of a lot of these parts. So I know everybody's probably going, show us the detail, show us the detail, <laughs> but uh, we will definitely be showing you that. All right. Um, yeah, so moving on from there, we've got the, uh, the lower fuselage. So you can see how the they actually, from the overview, see how the uh, intake is actually um, integrated with the lower fuselage. So uh, when I show you the intake trunk parts, uh, they kind of build over that. Uh, but it's actually hard, kind of hard to see. So if you're worried about filling in seams and things like that, I think with if you, especially if you leave those uh, those uh, doors on the on the intake doors closed, um, you probably won't see anything. But if you leave the doors open on top, um, you'll probably be able to look down and see something. So for you finicky modelers out there. Um, um, it won't be that bad, so you don't have to worry, really worry about having a fully seamless intake. Um, so also on this tree, we also have the, uh, the fuel tank. Uh, amazing thing that they did here, it's actually the first time it's ever been done on MH-29, is that the APU exhaust uh, on the bottom of the, of the MIG, the fulcrum, actually originally hit the fuel tank and it was causing uh, some major issues with the fuel tank bursting. Uh, so they actually replicated that. Um, in that assembly up here, they actually vents through the, the centerline fuel tank. Um, another really ingenious thing that's been done on this kit is too is the way the wheel wells have been designed, which is actually on a separate sprue. Um, but also on here, you can actually see the parabrick housing. Um, those are on the upper left, and we've got some gear bay doors here. And that's about it for this. So here we've got the the uh, rudder and we have the intake trunks and the nose cone. So the um, you can see again the rudder control services are separate, and they've done a really cool thing here to where the there's actually some offset um, pegs to prevent the uh, the nose cone from uh, getting bent or um, or the tip from getting rubbed against. Um, and we've got the trunk here, so you can actually see the. Uh, the trunk itself actually has uh, part of the wheel well molded into it, um, but pretty much the interior of the intake 
is actually the back side of this. There's no um, there's no separate insert that's actually glued into place. So there, there are a few injection pin marks on there, but uh, for the Pierce, uh, they, they'd be very easy to clean, but they'd be really hard to see with those doors in place anyway. So, it, and if you decide to close all the intake doors and the upper uh, upper doors as well, you don't have to worry about them at all. In which I'm sure, May 29s when parked on the ground, they usually are closed. So essentially, they're, they're FOD covers, you know, built-in FOD covers for a jet. All right, so we're here with the uh, the upper fuselage, and this is the uh, the close-in review. So we're starting out at the front end here. You can actually see the uh, I think it's their version of kind of like a little FLIR sensor. I, I forgot the designation on it, but there's all the the uh, the combing for the uh, the console area you can see there's it's beautifully molded there's even a little wire coming off of uh, the part there um, you can see the rear deck uh, there's actually a bunch of stuff that still glues on there and moving down here we've actually got uh, the uh, gas purge vents for the uh, the machine gun and you can see how the uh, the uh, the doors are all molded separately for the optional open or closed uh, configurations uh, but the really interesting thing I Notice here on the tooling is that you can see these, uh, actually, this part right here, it, it's, kind of, uh, it's kind of frosty, and uh, I'm led to believe that's where the uh, tooling split's going to be for the, uh, the two-seater version, so I have no doubt that we're probably going to see a, a UV version of the May 29, uh, hopefully soon. That'll be really cool. Um, so we'll move down, and you, kind of, you can see how beautiful the paneling is. Uh, the, it's just it's very petite it's not overdone uh, the riveting is excellent um, the wing root area is just amazing i mean God, how nice is that you know no seams to fill in the wing root I mean, you got a perfectly tooled factory line and moving down the the port wing you can see how the uh, the separation is done for leading edge flaps and trailing edge flaps got all the appropriate bumps for the um, push rod uh, actuators and we've got the even the uh, electrostatic discharge uh, <laughs> um, you know wire on there I mean that's and it's all protected by that right by that screw that prevent you know prevents it from snapping off I thought that was a nice touch yeah I'm very they thought a lot about this but uh, we'll move back up and we'll go back to the uh, afterburner section so you can see the shapes so uh, obviously this is a nine nine um, 912, which is the early version of Fulcrum A, so you can tell a lot from the later variants, like Fulcrum C, they had a much larger dorsal spine. So this is an A model. You can see how much smaller it is. Um, and we've got uh, here's the aftermer section. You can see how beautifully tooled uh, the shroud area is. Um, I'm amazingly done. But the uh, the riveting mixed in with all the fineness of the paneling um it's it's just absolutely beautiful i mean this I, i've never seen a well, i've seen some pretty good jet models but uh they, they've they've taken it up another step with this thing so another thing too to notice is that uh you kind of see right here this is actually the um the uh the hinge point for the elevators so even the elevators are positionable as well which is which is great. start with the back end this time. So you can actually see the um, the fineness of the APU exhaust vents, and uh, see the uh, the housing, the hinge points for the housing for the uh, parabrake housing. And going up here, you can see how the intake trunks are integrated into the lower fuselage, and the two parts that the two halves that the two trunk parts that actually go. Um, on top of this, they get glued together and they basically fit right over that. So I, without putting them all together, I really don't know how much you're actually going to see. But like I said earlier, if you uh, actually just leave all the the uh, the doors shut, um, <laughs> it pretty much uh, will definitely increase the build time, so you don't have to fill in those darn seams. Um, if I were to do it, I'd probably leave the bottom door, the bottom intake doors shut, and maybe just leave the the uh, doors on top open. Those look kind of cool. It's almost like an open gill on a fish. So we've got uh, the nose gear area here. It's really well done. Yeah, they definitely did their homework. And you know, being a Chinese company, company, I'm sure they probably had some uh, fulcrums in their backyard to do some good research on. 
So anyway, I'll move back around to the some other parts of the tree. We've got the uh, leaning edge flaps here. And here we've got uh, a fuel tank, and there's the uh, APU exhaust vent that goes through the, uh, the fuel tank itself. Pretty crazy design, pretty crazy. But um, I guess that was pretty, that was pretty much all you can really do if you, you know if you got a fuel tank that has to be where it is and the the vent vents where they are. I mean that's that's what you got to do. But uh, you can see the uh, I don't know what that line is on top, but um, yeah, I mean it's it, it maybe some kind of um, it looks like a, some type of umbilical. Um, I don't know if it's for uh, it, it's probably for uh, jettisoning for for jet use for jettison. I would imagine. Um, I mean, I don't think the U.S. would ever do anything like that. And here we've got the uh, here's the the, uh, the ramp for the intakes. So they're pretty simple. Um, I think there might be some photo etch that go on there. And uh, here's the outer wing. So again, we've got uh, the same type of detail that was on the uh, upper fuselage. And here we've got the doors, the main gear doors. And uh, since we uh, actually, I'll come back to the main gears. I'm going to show you the other side. Let's show you some of the detail there. Uh, I'm going to flip over here real quick. We've got uh, here's the upper uh, uh, doors that are open on takeoff usually, so it ensures that the, the aircraft doesn't suck up any type of fod on you know from the, from the Soviet runways. Um, so there's the open configuration, and here's the closed configurations. Uh, that looks like the uh, the tip of the center line, and here we've got the uh, the uh, the doors for the uh, parabrake. And I'm going to go ahead and flip the uh, sprue over so we can see what's on the inside, on the back side of this. And we've got some beautiful rivet detail on the. Um, I don't know if you can guys can see it from the reflection. But um, some really nice riveting de on detail on the inside and corrugations. And uh, <laughs> amazingly, there are no, um, actually, you know what? There's a couple sinkholes, uh, but nothing that can't be filled in with some liquid type of putty like surface or I mean, to me, uh, to me is a liquid primer as well. Um, and then from here, you can actually see how the, uh, the uh, the uh, exit housing is for the elevator. Um, it's actually hinged just like the real thing at the angle. I mean, it's just it's awesome. So I think from here, oh, you know what? Here, I'll show you guys the uh, the interior of the uh, the parabrake housing. There's some good stuff in here as well. And here's those dreaded sink marks again. But you know, in the tooling process, you know, you gotta you gotta put those things. You have no choice but to put them there. All right, so. Let's move on to the mini tank trunks and the rudder sprue. So here we've got uh, these are the uh, the outer sides of the uh, of the intake trunks, and this is where the uh, the rear part of the uh, wheel well is actually molded as as, as part of the uh, the trunk itself. Or well, actually, no, it's not. That's actually part of the airframe. Um, and then back here we've got uh, separate rudders with um, all the correct, uh, cor you know, corrugated detail. Here's the pitot tube. You know, this is a model I've been scrutinizing this thing, and you know, it, it's amazingly out of the box. And the only thing I could say is that it would be awesome if they made like a machine pitot tube for this thing. <laughs> that would be kind of in the icing of the cake. Um, and here we've got the uh, one of the uh, elevators. Yeah, so you, if you plan to move, you may want to uh, put some, uh, you know, some brass tubing or something. Because I've noticed the way it's flanged, uh, it looks like that you you will actually have to glue the elevator position before the halves go together. The way that that link is on there. So um, yeah, I would probably maybe try to steal like a Tamiya poly cap of some kind and maybe replace it with brass tubing. That way, it'll allow you allow you to make it positionable. Um, and here's the uh, interior uh, main trunks right here. And here's the other side of the rudder pieces. And we've got the nose cone. Looks like it's got a very accurate shape. 
Haven't had, really had a chance to scrutinize this against uh, any line drawings yet, but uh, I think overall we're, we still got a great model. You can see how beautiful the uh, the paneling is again on the rudder uh, rudder piece. Here we've got the the rear uh, uh, engine housing covers. So again, same type of, uh, of tooling, beautiful tooling. We've got. Uh, yeah, actually, this is the only thing that really impresses me about this model. Um, is the actually I'm drag back down here. What is that piece that's in the center right there? Like Which piece? You, that's actually the sidewalls to the ah. to the um, main gear wells. Ah. But look how beautiful that is. Ah. I mean, it's got all the corrugated work in there. Um, because the thing is, if that was molded onto the fuselage, you know, that's called negative draft. There's no way you can pull the mold out. You know, as a one piece deal. So by them designing it. As a separate piece, um, you know, by building the box, the gear well box, it allows you to get that kind of detail. And moving up here, this is this is the uh, the upper interior lining of the well. But I mean, look at the wiring in there. I mean, it's just. I mean, I'm sure Aries is probably going to do something. I mean, they, don't, they always have some, have the answer to some. But you know, for something out of the box, I mean, look at that. It's even got the little hinge actuator for the upper part of the, the main gear strut. You know, I mean, all well, the little details. Like they did their research. Yeah, I mean, it's it's beautiful. We've got um, we've got uh, the main gear hub covers. Um, there's a cushion for K36. Uh, we've got looks like we've got two style gas purge vents. Uh, here's there's one of the avionics boxes that goes on the rear uh, rear deck behind the cockpit. Uh, linkage actuators for the canopy. Um, I think that's more wheel well stuff. And uh, those are the sigil links for the main wheel wells. Um, and look and look at these little parts right here. I mean, those are the the linkages for the aileron. I mean, <laughs> how cool is that? I mean, most companies would just mold that in as part of a as part of the fairing and call it good. But I mean, you've You've actually got a little linkage coming out out of the wing there. Um, here's another little gem that's coming up is uh, the console. Uh, I'll show be showing sure later on, but the decal sheet actually has individual gauges in which you can uh, stick the uh, instruments into the gauges. Um, here's here's the main gear struts. Beautiful landing gear. Um, you know, I mean, add a little bit of brake brake line detail, and you're good. Uh, here's, here's some more little pitos, uh, some intake scoops. I was trying to find a parts count number for how many parts were included, but still yeah. the name for here's the um, here's a splash guard. I'm trying to get it, I can't really get the no, top. It's really, it's really hard to see, but um, the splash guard's beautifully molded as well. It's maybe I'll move it sideways, but it's you know it's fully fluted. It's it's all the way open. You know for a, a plastic piece, it's uh, Splash guards really well done because usually a lot of companies that make these splash guards that come in kits usually have to put the two halves together and they're a pain in the butt and you got to sand everything together. Um, I think that's a headrest for a K36. Uh, here's a nose gear well or nose nose uh, nose gear, and here's the tires. So it's actually got some uh, bulge built into it, not bulge, it were flattened or weight put in. Smaller miscellaneous uh, actuators. I think that's a, the drag link off of the main nose gear. Um, and here's the nose gear well. Oh no, no, excuse me. Duh. No, that's the floor of the cockpit. I think to the to the left is actually the nose gear well. And there's the back of the K36 ejection seat. And we've got some console parts. That's right. I think that's more rear deck. I think that goes over the rear deck. And then here's the sidewalls for the cockpit. Those are really well done. But um, yeah, and then here's the, uh, the K36. So, uh, you know, some people may want to replace the ejection seat with a resin one, but, you know, they've actually done a good effort to actually have a usable seat. Um, so you can kind of see the, uh, the, the uh, TF30 or the R33 um, engines. You can see how, how well detailed they are. Um, and coming down here is a part that really 
impresses me molding wise is the uh, what we call the turkey feathers essentially and see how well I mean it's actually got some little actuator detail um, you still have to glue on the two sides um, so um, I'm sure it fits very good so you know maybe there's I, I think where the joint is is right on where to, the actual seam is so you don't worry about filling in any seams at all but um, yeah I, I, I actually can't wait to build this model to actually see see how the hot section looks. So here we've got the flame holder and we've got some more engine detail parts. Uh, that's actually the, the can itself. And there's the uh, pedals that actually go into the uh, nozzle itself that get filled in. But I mean, for out of the box, I mean, it's amazing. Here's the, the uh, engine um, uh, compression fans. And here's the external fuel tank, external wing tanks. I can't remember how many gallon these tanks are. And then there's uh, more exhaust parts there also. So yeah, again, there's there's actually two of these screws in the kit. So here we're going to be covering the pylons. Um, I can't remember if these are the. I think these are the pylons for the. I actually know they're both. Maybe both. Um, so here's the pylons for the Alamo and the Archer. So you can see those are very well done as well. And they're one piece. You don't have to put any halves together. No, no seams to fill, nothing to sand. Just a matter of clipping and doing a little bit of filing. And then here we've got uh, the pitot tube, some blade antenna, and there's the chaff buckets for, that go in front of the rudder. So and there is the uh, there's the hole insert that goes in fr front front of the rudder. So you can see it's it's split at the point where you can do an early version as well without the chaff buckets. So I, I have a sneaky suspicion that there will be uh, another variation, probably on the UV version. And here we've got the uh, the parts for the, uh, the engine cars. So it's a pretty simple little thing. It's just a little you know, a bunch of little sheet weldments of what what's supposed to be sheet metal weldments. No wheels. I assume this is a, uh, on a stand. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, like you, know what's really, would be weird. you know what's really bizarre is the way they separated this, but this is uh, the little um, antenna right here. That's actually, a, that part right there. It's very important to the trailer. Um, yeah, that actually goes on the rear rudder on the uh, on the trailing edge, and they've actually done a beautiful job on that little part as well. Yeah, I haven't seen it that crystal. So looking at the reflection, look how crystal clear this is. I mean, isn't that just... I mean, there's no seam line running on the center, so you don't have to worry about polishing, you know, your glass out and cracking it. Um, and look how thin it is too. I mean, it's, you know, for 48 scale, this is it's beautifully done. You know, I mean, that is some awesome glass, and they even have the reinforcement ribs on the windscreen too, and it's it's subtly done, just like the real thing. You can kind of see it right there. Mm -hmm. Well, here we have the uh, beautiful weapons package, um, including the kit. Um, I've, in all the years of uh, building jet aircraft models, I've never seen a company <laughs> package missiles as a separate package in the kit, um, and especially with weapons that have already have the fins that you know that are already pre-positioned and glued on already. It's the, you know that's the biggest nightmare is to keep all the fins aligned. And Great Wall has just done an extraordinary job with these uh, weapons. Uh, what we have here are basically the uh, A-10 um, Alamos and we have the A-11 Archers. So they're basically the American equivalent of the Sparrow and the Sidewinder. All right, and here we've got the uh, the Archer. So this is kind of like the, um, the uh, their version of our Sidewinder. It's kind of a short range missile. Um, but look at this. I mean, this is a one piece molding and you can use my my thumbnail as a reference for thickness, but look at the thickness of the the fins. Super scale, everything's aligned. You don't have to worry about filling in seams. Um, all the details on there. I mean, it's amazing. And then if you look at the the trailing edge, the uh, exhaust detail. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. It's, they, they've they've replicated the real thing. I mean, it's just, you know who would have ever imagined. But with all this new CAD technology, I guess you can do that. Um, but <laughs> I mean, these are these are like 
you know, for injection molded, I mean, these, these things are just as good as resonance. Um, and I did look up, you know, Archer, the secret heads on the Archers. They actually ha have a tinted head on them. So, I mean, I mean, they're, they're not really clear like the American ones where, you know, you can actually, they're trend, you know, they're clear and you can kind of see the, uh, the secret head inside. But with this, you'd probably get away with just using some gloss black paint. But for the Pierce, you know, you could actually file that off and just put some epoxy on there. But, um, yeah, for a one-piece molding, I mean, these... <laughs> These are amazing. I, I, I hope they, they do something American just so I can get some nice sidewinders and arams and sparrows out of it. And you can see the mounting points right there. It's even got the umbilical. Right, that's where those pieces we saw go down into. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, it's got this little thing right here. That's the umbilical. Um, right. That little thing right there. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just just... A beautiful piece of uh you definitely say they've raised the bar for for this type of uh yeah piece so and another thing too if you notice i mean if you look at the inside of the interiors of, of the fins i mean they have full rivet detail inside i don't know if you can really see it and get in there um really close if you want <laughs> but look at that i mean it's not just smooth and a glue on there i mean it actually has has all the appropriate plating and everything and reinforcement plates so I mean they, yeah I mean that's that's the thing. A lot of companies, you know, they they'll do a beautiful job on the jet and then they just kind of do right. the ordinance halfway. And you know, as being a jet builder, I I had always put an emphasis on, you know, I mean I, I put as much work into my weapons as I do with with the aircraft itself. So here we've got the Alamo, the the medium to long range missile, and again, <laughs> you can see how nice this is. I mean, look at that. You would think it was like 32nd scale, but it's 48th. I mean, perhaps uh, Ming will uh, make these, will will uh, kind of take the Hasegawa route. Oh, I'm glad they're not actually doing the Hasegawa route, because if, if this was a Hasegawa kit, you'd probably have to buy the weapon separately. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, uh, it's, it's nice that they include these, but may, perhaps they'll uh, market a separate weapon set in the future. You know, for people that have uh, academy flanker kits or something, you know, because this would be a you know a really nice missile to put on their other uh, Soviet forward skill jets. Um, and again, on the uh, the exhaust section, you know, it's it's hollowed out. No drilling here. It's already done for you. Here we've got the decal sheet. Uh, they're molded. To I don't know who, if these are actually, uh, now these are printed in China, so they're not from Cartograph, they're not from Italy, but, you know, they're molded fairly thin, and, um, you know, from looking at this, everything looks like it's on register, you know, everything is centered, so, we're, you know, right here, we've got a bank of, uh, you know, we've got the Syrian markings, and then we've got the, the Russian markings. The upside down 16. The upside down 16. <laughs> uh, we've got the Black, Black Sea naval insignia. Markings, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's got all the nomenclature. You know, it has everything from missiles to, you know, which is nice. So yeah, they really didn't leave anything out. And here's a whole another decal sheet with uh, more nomenclature. And uh, this looks like stuff for weaponry. Here's the photo etch. And so here we've got the uh, the seat harness for the K36, in which I thought was a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't know they had machine guns in the cockpit. So I anyway, was the harness. Uh, got some more uh, vent work there as well. Uh, the uh, photo etched uh, heads-up display ha uh, bracket. We've got the river mirrors for the canopy. Uh, well, this concludes our uh, inbox review of the Great Wall Hobbies May 29 Fulcrum in 148 scale. Uh, I hope you found the uh, review informative. And uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to reviewing uh, future th items from the company, hopefully a two-seater and maybe a newly tooled SC-27. Wow. I hope <laughs> that would be nice. That would be, that would be awesome. Well, thanks, Ernie, for coming by. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, Jim. It's always a pleasure to come by the studio. And if you guys have comments or questions about the review or about the kit, please leave them down in the comments section. And uh, Thanks for watching. We know this one was a, a, a long, a long review, but it was very detailed, and I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing all, all the various uh, parts on the kit and, and getting, getting some feedback from Ernie. And if you have any questions for me, um, you can always email me at gfactormodels at aol.com. Great. Well, 
we'll see you next time.